Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today with the Matthew Henry Study Bible. What a great idea. Matthew Henry, mostly first commentary, almost everybody gets, is a Matthew Henry six-volume set. Hendrickson puts them out. Uh, a lot of times they'll come with the rest of his writings in the front so you can get kind of the complete works of Matthew Henry. Who is Matthew Henry? Well, he was a nonconformist minister, came from a nonconformist household back in the uh, late 1600s, early 1700s. I think he was born 1652, died 1754. He was 51 when he passed away. But he did a commentary on the entire Old Testament and then the entire Gospels and the Book of Acts, and then he passed away. Thirteen other nonconformist ministers got together and finished it up. And then that was under the uh, editorialship of Burden and Hunter, I think, that they kind of finished up Romans through Revelation. And Romans through Revelation kind of have a, a very strong, stridently anti-Papist message that some people don't care for. But, you know, it was uh, it's just scripture, and it was the day as well. That that's who they were. And so Matthew Henry, George Whitefield, he read the entire commentary through four different times. Now this is not the entire commentary. This is just select portions in a study Bible. But he read the entire commentary through four times, the last time on his knees. Spurgeon thought it was great. Wesley thought it was great. And so they took the excerpts, like the best excerpts, and put it in a study Bible. This one is put out by World. I think Hendrickson is doing this now. I got this one on eBay. And it's, it's a decent sized Bible. It's not as big as like an ESV study Bible. Probably about the same size, similar size, maybe a tad bit bigger than a life application Bible. But let's look on the inside of this. This has some very good qualities to it. It's going to have a presentation page. Now, it's not the glossy. It is nice. It's kind of in parchment paper. It has husband's family tree, wife's family tree, births, marriages. So it's kind of, that's a good thing. A. Kenneth Abraham was the general editor. He's the one that picked out what goes in here. Now, you're going to notice from the table of contents, one of the things that makes this Bible stand out is just the print size. I mean, even the table of contents is large print. And there's just not a lot to it. It's going to have an introduction, kind of tell you how they did things, who Matthew Henry is. And then it's going to jump right into the Bible. It's going to have just a little bit of an introduction and a whole lot of notes. Copious amount of notes. It also has center column reference. Now, I'm going to say this is 11-point print at least. Now, it is light, not extremely light, but light. Tons of center references. Also, the center references, it, it's all contained in the center reference. It's not in the text itself, so it's good for reading. And you can see there's far more notes than there are text. The notes themselves, unlike most study Bibles, I'm going to say the notes are at least nine, nine and a half point print, maybe ten. And uh, like I'm just here on Genesis 2, you can see the proportion of notes to Scripture. Just enormous amounts of notes on there. An amazing amount. And so it's packed. Again, it's not the entire Matthew Henry commentary. It's going to have some in-text subject headers that I really like in deep, dark, bold uh, writing. And uh, basically, that's going to be it. I'm going to get to like the beginning of like the unexpected Messiah. That's so good. You know, Matthew Henry, he was known probably the most famous quote out of here is in Genesis where it talks about he observed that God took Eve not out of his head to rule over him, not under his feet for him to rule over her in a certain sense, but out of his side that 
they would be together and near his heart. So that's kind of like the, like the most famous passage out of there. Yeah, let me just show you another introduction here, like for Jeremiah. And it's just two color. I mean, it's white and black. It's not, you know, yellows and blues. And it's, you know, it's not full color. But it's information you want anyhow. The other stuff's kind of catchy and snazzy. May help sales. And sometimes if it's a picture of archaeology or something, that's kind of neat. But really, you're wanting information. And this has the information. Now, remember, he was writing in the 1700s. Uh, 1708, 1710 is when this came out. So, take that for what it's worth. It's going to be more of what's called devotional. But it is going to have some theology in it as well. And he was nonconformist, so he didn't go along with the Church of England is what that means. I did want to show you the red letter because I think that is a way this Bible really shines. It's one of the most re readable red letterings, if not the most readable red lettering I've ever seen in the Bible. So that's very important. What's the purpose of red lettering if you can't read it? Who was Melchizedek? How Christ is re represented by Melchizedek? So it's just got a lot of neat stuff. And, and again, it's just like this much scripture, this much notes, you know. So they, they put a lot, packed a lot in here. Has a very complete concordance. It does have red letter in Revelation, which is important to some of you. Tremendous maps. Some of them are two-page maps. And the maps really, they're just kind of like thick cardboard paper. They're not glossy paper. That's not a deal breaker for me. You can get real good deals on these. Used. Also, CBD seems to constantly have them on sale. And a lot of maps. Just one page at the end for spine reinforcement. So the Matthew Henry Study Bible, uh, again, it seems like when people get commentaries, somebody will come and say, well, what commentary should I get? Matthew Henry. It's like the first one. So I'm going to guess it's still the best-selling commentary around. And they put the commentary, the best parts of it, in a study Bible. Great job. So God bless you. I'll talk with you later.